Hey everybody, my name is Alex with Hey Hardware, and in this video we are going to create a Windows 11 VM in Proxmox. So I recently got back into Proxmox because I've been creating a lot of guides, and a lot of times I need to install Windows or I need to install Ubuntu, and I don't want to do that on bare metal because it just takes too much time. So with Proxmox, I can launch a Windows VM really quickly. And it took me a little bit of time to figure out the best way to do it. Um, I went through a bunch of different guides and finally just sort of came up with my own way of getting it launched. And I, it might even be the, like the best practice way, but uh, I'm not totally sure. This is just what works for me. So we are just gonna go through this guide I have created following the instructions and it should be uh, pretty easy to get everything running. So there's a few things we need to do. First is navigate to the Windows 11 download page. And then you'll scroll down to uh, download the ISO. Select Windows 11. You'll click download now and it does a little thing. Then you'll choose your region or your language actually. Click confirm. And then you're going to want to do the 64-bit download. And if you want to do the verification when we upload it into Proxmox, you'll click this little drop down here. And then you'll go down to whatever locale you chose. So mine would be just be the English 64-bit. And you would want to eventually, you'll, you'll copy this and you'll need to paste it in when you go to verify the image. And we're using SHA-256, which is the algorithm you'll need to put in. So let's just jump back, make sure I'm following the directions here. Okay, we also need to get the vert IO ISO. So you can click this link here, and then you're gonna find this download vert IO win ISO. Click this link to download that as well. Okay, so let's go into Proxmox. And we're going to go into our server view, and then we're going to select this local PVE, and then we're going to upload our ISO images. So let's close out of these two. We'll go to local PVE, ISO images, and I already have these uploaded. But what you're basically going to do is click upload, select file. You can't see, but uh, you would basically just select that Win11 uh, latest version. The name should populate automatically. And if you do want to check uh, that it, uh, the checksum is good, you can do SHA-256 and then paste in that checksum, which was on the Windows 11 download page. Now I'm not going to do that. In fact, I'm not even going to upload this because I already have it uploaded. So it might take a second to upload, but once it is uploaded and you have both of them in your ISO images, then we can go to the next step. So here's just going through, uh, putting in the hash, selecting SHA-256, the download will get done. Okay, so the next thing we can do is create the VM. So let's go back into Proxmox. This is a little bit small, so let me boost it up a little bit. And then we're gonna click Create VM. Now for node, I only have one node, which is my PVE. And for my VM ID, I have 101, I deleted another VM that was 100, so I'm gonna actually keep this as 100. And then I have a naming convention that I like to follow. This is gonna be Windows 11. I'm doing some guides uh, for another project. So I'm gonna label this CLI C. And then you can leave resource pool blank. Go to the next. All right, so now we're gonna pick our install. So storage should be local, and that corresponds to where we uploaded the ISO. And I'm going to go ahead and select Windows 11. And now for type, you're going to want to select Microsoft Windows. Keep the version correct, but you're going to add vert IO drivers. And then you're going to select the vert win ISO. So this will mount this as a CD-ROM that you can load the drivers during install. Let me just double check, make sure we're doing everything as we should. All right, we'll move to system. So we'll click next. We're gonna use default for the graphics card. We can add, we can pass through a PCIe 
uh, graphics card later after installation. That's what I typically do. You're going to want to make sure uh, Kemu or Kumu or Q-E-M-U, I don't really know how to pronounce that, is checked. You're going to want to keep the BIOS as OVMF, UFI. Add EFI disk, and I'm just going to add my local. And then I'm going to keep add TPM checked and then add in local for my TPM storage and keep everything else the same. Click next. And now you can just select your disk uh, space basically. So we're going to be using our local LVM. That's all I have available here. I like to do 128 Gibby bytes, but it, you should at least do 64. And I leave everything else checked uh, as default. For CPU, I'm going to do 16 cores based on what you have. You can do uh, whatever cores you want. And then select host from the type. And this is, I think there's some positives and negatives about what type you select. I don't plan to like clone or move this to any other uh, like Proxmox environment. So host, I think, is fine for that. It basically is passing through like the actual CPU. So when you go into like Windows and you check the system, you're actually gonna see your CPU listed and I'll show that once we're in. And click next. And I do 16384, so basically 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then for network, I leave everything as default. And then confirm, we'll just click finish. And it'll take a second here to get everything spun up. And then we can click it. And then we can uh, right click and then do start. And then I go into the console and you're probably gonna see like a press any button to boot or it might just go right into it. So yeah, press any key to boot from CD. So I just press the enter key. And we can see we're getting right into our Windows installer. We'll just go through this. So I'll click Next, Next, and then I agree, Next. I don't have a product key. And then I recommend you select Windows 11 Pro if you want to use Remote Desktop to connect to this, which is way faster than using this console. The RDP is definitely recommended. It's It almost feels like you're actually on the PC when you're using it, assuming your network connection is good. So I'm gonna click Next. I'm gonna accept. And then here's our first thing we need to do. So the drivers are not loaded and that's why we have those vert IO drivers. So we're gonna go load driver, browse, we're going to find that vert win ISO, which is the top one. I know it's very small. Then you're just going to select AMD and then Windows 11 and click OK. And you should, should see the Red Hat vert IO SCSI pass through controller. Select that and click install. And now you should see your disk. We'll click next. And then we'll click install. Okay, once the initial installation happens, you should see an automatic reboot. And we're gonna continue with our Windows installation here. All right, we have the initial installation done and we're just gonna go start going through the workflow. You'll just fill this out however is applicable for you. And then once you get to the Let's Connect to Your Network, you'll see that no adapter was identified. We're gonna press Shift F10 and it's gonna bring up the console. And then make sure you click on the console before you start typing. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is install the rest of the vert IO drivers. So 
I believe it's going to be d colon slash vert. Nope. When guest tools dot exe. All right. I had to check a little bit. Um, if you're not sure, it's it's listed in the wiki, but you can always do dir d colon slash, and you can see it's this bottom one uh, down here. So let's go and do command here. So d colon slash vert io dash win dash guest, and you can do tab to autocomplete, and then just hit enter. And that's going to launch the vert win io or guest tools setup. So you'll agree to the license, click install, and the drivers are going to get started. Just click next again, I accept, next. And then these are all of the things that it's going to install. Then click next and install. So basically using all of the uh, just default settings for this. Then you'll click finish. And it's going to do a few more things, setting up your uh, guest agent and making sure everything is ready so we can continue our installation. Click close. You can exit out of this now and you can see the network is already connected. So we'll click next. Now there's probably going to be quite a bit of updates that are going to happen. So just let those finish and then we'll continue. All right, looks like they're going to want us to get everything logged in before we proceed with the updates. So I'm just going to label mine Bob VM 100. Click Next. All right, I'm going to set it up for personal use. All right, so that took a little while to get all the updates installed, and now we're just going to follow, again, the standard practice for installing Windows 11, Windows 11. All right, you can create a pin, click OK, and then up to you. I just unselect all these because that's just what I like to do. We'll be setting this up as a new PC. Skip. Skip. And skip. Not now. Decline. Man, I hate all these things. Uh, next. And there we go. We are in Windows. And we should see if we right click uh, device manager, you can see there's no missing drivers or anything. Our display is just going to be the generic uh, display adapter. And everything is installed. Let's just double check to make sure. Okay, we went through all this. We went through Windows setup. We installed our vert IO drivers. Post installation. So this is going to be another guide here, but you can enable RDP. So right now we're logging in through this console. It's a little slow and there's like a double mouse. I don't know if you can see it. I prefer to log in through RDP. So feel free to check out the RDP guide and the QEMU agent uh, should be installed. You can confirm that by going to services, scrolling down to the queues, and you can see the guest agent is installed and running. So now you can actually control your VM pretty easily. So if I want to just shut it down, I can right click and do shut down and it'll actually shut down the VM. So you can see the signals are getting through and everything is good to go. So hopefully that was helpful. Feel free to leave a like if it was, and I'll see you in the next one.